it's time that I finally answer some questions that you guys have been asking about the firmament and why on earth I would believe it exists, what proofs we have that it's there other than the Bible and us being Bible thumpers, crazy religious people, and you're asking some really good questions. And you're about to see why people like me and thousands and thousands of other people are believing that the earth is not what we've been told and that the powers that run this world, the powers of darkness that have ran it for centuries would actually hide the truth in a seemingly innocent way and no, not every scientist is in on it. It's not like that at all. But yes, there are some things hidden from you about creation and who you are and it's for a reason and it serves a purpose and a large plan and the shape of our earth and how it moves as I've said many times is not the most important truth but this awakening experience has been leading people in that direction and hopefully it'll do the same for those of you who always have had this feeling that deep down something is off and that you aren't who you were told you are and neither is this earth so pay attention do not believe anything I say or that anyone says without proving it for yourself. That's all we're saying. Be skeptical. No more blind faith that we've all had for many years. Prove all things. So let's first answer the question, what is this firmament that I'm speaking of and what proofs do I have? And the first thing that you need to know about the firmament is that it's been mentioned in the creation story as the expanse that divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And I had read that many times, never understood what it meant or that there was any proof of it, and just kind of pictured that being maybe where clouds were kept in deep space. And that is partly true. There is different levels to the firmaments. But the firmament was also mentioned during the Great Flood when the floodgates were opened and water came pouring down onto Earth. That did happen. This earth was flooded, and for a good reason. And that's an important long story. And the world pretty much started over from that point. And a lot of people thought, well, that's when the firmament went away, was the floodgates were open, and all of that happened. However, that's not what happened, and there is proof. And we're going to first look at the proof of these rockets that we have all watched go up into the air and seemingly appear to go straight back down to Earth in a rainbow flight path. And people say it is perspective. But luckily, we have pictures of these flight paths from the side view. And you can see that unless the Earth is really tiny, these aren't flying with the curvature of the Earth. They are flying out into the ocean, or as some have joked about, the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> where all the witnesses vanish. And um, you'll see here that we do understand how orbital mechanics work. That you're supposed to go 10 times faster than a bullet to get into orbit. Even though we have never seen combustion that happens that fast so that it could wipe out all mankind. But here's a rocket that did not follow that flight path. Many of you have seen this rocket footage floating around or flying around. And this rocket footage is from the Go Fast rocket launch. If you've never seen it, it's record breaking. You've never seen a rocket go this fast, or this high, or this straight up. Usually they curve downward, as you just saw in the video, but this one did not. And it's made a lot of people open their mind to the fact that maybe that's why our pictures of Earth are composites. Maybe that's why they invented the story about the Van Allen belts, and why we can't go to deep space anymore and send people that far. But this rocket made it 73 miles high, and then it came to an instant stop like you're about to see. So watch and listen. Wow, here it is again. And like I said before, draw your own conclusions. It could have ran into gravity, but check out the side view. Luckily they had a camera facing sideways. And you can see the horizon when it comes to a stop. You could also see what looks like the moon far off distance as this thing is spinning. And that horizon looks very flat. Okay, 
draw your own conclusions about that. It could have been the fisheye lens. However, I saw another rocket launch. This time it was at night. And people ask, why did that rocket not explode if it was moving that fast? That's a great question, a legitimate question. I'm not going to avoid that question because I think there were some miraculous circumstances and some properties about the firmament that we did not understand. People say, well, it's a solid glass dome. Well, that could probably be partly true. However, this dome, this solid expanse, like a molten looking glass, they call it in the Bible, is impenetrable. We've tried to blow it up before during Operation Fishbowl. I won't go too much into that aspect of it and the history of it. I trust that you'll look into it after you see what you're about to see later on. But this rocket at night was traveling and doing some weird things like we've seen rockets do before at night. And it's very mysterious. And there's really no explaining exactly what we're seeing. But we do know that this thing is doing something weird. <laughs> and I was looking at it and watching it and going, well, it doesn't look like it hit the firmament. And then, to my surprise, I seen some ripples, and you're about to see them, move across what appears to be the firmament. And there they go. These ripples look just like ripples you've seen on water, but this is really, really far away. These are giant ripples moving outward. I thought that was spectacular. I had never seen anything like that. And those are my first clues that these rockets might have been hitting something. And this might be partly why they are lying about deep space and sending us all sorts of animations. Then I came across these sprites, which is a phenomenon known as upper atmospheric lightning. And people don't know about this. Your common person does not know about these things. And they occur way above clouds. Clouds are around three and a half miles high. Sprites occur about 65, 70 miles high where those rockets were coming to a stop. And these scientists, they show a documentary, this was by Nova, it was on PBS, and didn't really think much about it when I first saw it, until I started putting the pieces together. And then I saw something, a barrier, light up above this sprite. And I thought, what if this is the firmament? And I analyzed this footage. I would slow this footage down, I would change the brightness, and sure enough, I started seeing what I thought I was seeing, the firmament. Put there by our Father, and the story of creation, it's been there all along, and it's so sad that we've missed it, and missed out on seeing His glory for our whole lives, but there it is, and you're about to see a wave move across it, kind of like the ripple you saw with the rocket. There's that wave, the sprite shooting out of it. Yes, that's a wave. It's not a cloud that you're seeing light up. Again, this is many miles above the clouds. You are seeing the firmament. And this footage was taken down in another video that I put out and blocked in the United States. And for good reason. Because it's waking many people up. They are seeing this solid proof that there's a barrier that these things are shooting out of. These sprites that were mentioned in the Book of Enoch. When it talked about stars rising up and becoming lightning and not losing their form. I thought that was crazy. That book was removed from the Bible and it explained exactly how our system works, the math behind it and everything. But there's the firmament. You can see it. Again, draw your own conclusions. The fact that it's right where those rockets were stopping is no coincidence. Don't take my word for it. Keep looking into it. But I'm going to show you some more proof that the sun, moon, and stars are not light years apart, like we've been told. The nearest star, if it's as far away as they say it is, we would be able to observe that in one night while looking at star trails. However, that's not what we see. We do not see the types of parallax that we can prove that we would see. And I know people say, well, it's a different type of parallax because you're only seeing the stars from a spinning Earth. Well, there's experiments you can do with a camera that you spin as if it were Earth with lights placed at various distances. And when you use the scale that the heliocentric model gives us, it's really hard to do on Earth because it's so far away.
but this man here from Cody's lab, his name's Cody, he hates us, but I'm going to use his work, and he shows you if that's the moon and the earth right there, they're really close together, they're really tiny dots, here's the sun, and no, that's not how close we are to the sun, he's just showing you size-wise, they're a couple feet apart, and he spaces them apart, but um, the moon and the earth and the sun at the end of his measuring tape, and he lays them out, he's laying out some of the planets, Jupiter and Pluto, and all of that, there's Pluto, so he's laying these out on a football field and then he goes to show us where the nearest star would be and his journey takes him really far not just across town he actually has to leave the state he drives over a hundred and twenty miles away using the scale with those tiny little dots that you saw to show us where the nearest star is that blew a lot of people's minds and really kind of furthers that fantasy of deep space. However, I saw time lapses of the star trails and I've seen them moving with the moon. And as I saw them, I noticed they were all moving at the same speed as if they were the same distance away from the earth. And thought, hmm, shouldn't be seeing that. Or should I? I don't really know. Let me do some tests to prove all things. And then I saw the sun and the moon moving through the sky in a time lapse and they were moving at the same speed and making light trails that were the same size and I thought well if I can set up an experiment that will prove to me that a spinning camera would do this with lights at various distances maybe I will look back into this heliocentric model that was invented by someone who just looked at the stars in the 1500s so I set up my camera and some distant lights and I got this idea from a genius at another channel. His name was Chris Van Matter. And I'd seen an experiment where he had done this on a small scale and produced some shocking results. And so I set up a camera, did my own experiment, and sure enough, the, the light trails that I was seeing looked very similar until I traced one of the lights that were about that was about half a mile away and drug it down to a light that was probably 25 feet away from my camera not even close to the scale that Cody was using it would have been much closer if that was the Sun it would have been a couple feet away but I was trying to be biased to the globe and the light trail was a completely different size could imagine the difference you would be seeing if that distant light was 120 miles away. If we could cut through that much atmosphere, you would see a dramatic difference. And our stars and what we're seeing up above us would look totally different. This is something you can do yourself. Do not believe me. Do not trust me. I could be lying to you. But I hope you're starting to see that we don't need a whole lot of crazy theories to prove the truth. We don't need it. Albert Einstein figure who they have put in place to create such theories. Up is up, down is down, straight and level is straight and level. There are many more proofs out there, you just have to look up, see for yourself, look at the stars, look at the sun, make sure you're using eye protection, <laughs> but figure this stuff out, it's really awesome. The truth and the fact that they have been able to pull one over on us for so long is quite impressive. But go ahead, suck it up, admit that you were fooled, no big deal, swallow your pride, and do some investigation. The truth really does sound crazy. But once you find out the truth, the lies that you believe sound a whole lot crazier. I encourage you guys to share this before it's deleted again, download it, mirror it, upload it, whatever you want to do. It's free for anyone that wants to use it. I love you guys. The Father loves you way more than I do and sacrificed a lot more for you than I ever will. I pray and ask that you get to know Him and understand who you really are and that it's okay to lose the things of this world to gain something that you cannot lose, that you do not deserve, 
and I ask that it sets you free for the Father's glory, Yahuwah Elohim, the one true Father who made of this earth, who made the heavens, and He loves you. And I thank Him for sending me here to tell you this and so that you understand exactly who you are and who He is. May His love and peace be with you forever. 